The Department of Public Health and Human Services is pleased to bring you Aging Horizons. Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, Fraud, Legal Issues, Veterans Benefits and Caregiving. Aging Horizons is a program dedicated to inform and prepare Montanans on these timely issues, making a difference to you and your loved ones. Here now is today's program host. Today on Aging Horizons, we'll be speaking with Jackie Stokel and Joan Taylor all about the Governor's Conference on Aging. What is it and why you really want to make sure that you get the chance to attend in Billings this year. So make sure you stay tuned to today on Aging Horizons. We'll go over all the speakers that you're going to want to hear about, how to register, and how to sponsor this amazing conference. So you're not going to want to miss even one second of today's Aging Horizons. With as many as one in 10 Americans at risk for Alzheimer's or some other form of dementia, Chances are someone you know and love will receive that diagnosis. When that happens, you may well feel devastated, but know that you are not alone. Help is available. You don't have to face dementia by yourself. Call the free 24-7 Alzheimer's Association helpline 800-272-3900 for guidance and support. It's been 27 years. I never thought I'd still be smoking, but here I am, COPD and all. I'm about to have a granddaughter. There's so much to show her, but I'm scared I won't be able to keep up like I used to. I kind of gave up on myself on quitting, but it's different now. I want to be here for her and for my daughter. Summer in Montana is a great time to visit your local farmer's market. Enjoy the social atmosphere while shopping for a wide variety of fresh, locally grown produce. Together with both WIC and Senior Farmer's Market Nutrition Programs, you help feed your family five or more daily servings of fruits and vegetables for better health. You also help local ag producers and enhance the state's economy. So, for summer fun that's nutritious and helps Montana's economy, shop at your local farmer's market. I'm Attorney General Tim Fox. Nowadays, all of you have to worry about cybersecurity. Something as simple as visiting pirate websites can put your computer at risk. Hackers use pirate websites to infect your computer and steal your ID and financial information, or even take over your computer camera without you knowing it. Don't let hackers into your house. Be careful with the websites you visit and warn your kids on how to stay safe online. To learn more, visit my website Welcome to Aging Horizons, brought to you by the Department of Public Health and Human Services. I'm your host, Katie Lovell, and today we're speaking with Jackie Stokel, who's a program specialist at Aging Services, and Joan Taylor, who's the chair of the Governor's Advisory Council. Joan, thank you so much for being here. Jackie, thank you, thank you for being here. So Joan, tell me a little bit, what is the Governor's Advisory Council? The Governor's Advisory Council is an 11-member board appointed by the Governor and our role is to be aware of aging issues and to uh, you know let the governor know what those are sure. we work closely with the office on aging and um, our role is really to be aware to educate ourselves and then to share the information we have in hopes that maybe we can make some difference in policies or sure. issues and part of your guys' job is to put on or help put on this mm -hmm. uh, Governor's Conference on Aging. So tell me a little Correct. bit about the conference. Well, uh, the conference this year is in Billings okay. on um, September 24th and 26th. And we feel it's very important to sponsor this conference. We've been the sponsor for, I believe, the last 50 years almost. Okay. And uh, we try to take what we've learned and incorporate that into uh, the conference. Okay. Uh, you know, Montana's an aging state, and it's important, we believe, that, uh, you know, we help with that process by educating uh, caregivers, seniors, and then their uh, providers. Absolutely. And it's, you know, this year the theme is uh, Rock Your Age, Still Cruising. And it's important that uh, we accept our age, uh, enjoy it as much as we can sure. and make it the best it can. And so through this conference, 
I think we provide that. It's, it's a lot of fun. We try to do education, but we also try to have fun. And you said it's in Billings, Billings. this year? Mm -hmm. At the Convention Center, is that at correct? At the Billings Hotel and Convention Center. And it, that's the September 24th 20. through the 26th. Correct. So that's the last week of September. Correct. Okay, <laughs> wonderful. So, and this is the 51st year of the conference. That's amazing. That's, yes. It is that's amazing. That's a long-standing yeah. conference. Well, and I, the theme changes every year? It, uh, it changes every year uh, because we feel the issues change. Sure. But there are some that are, you know, we really focus on caregiving and health and uh, fun and uh, really provide information to people that they can take back to their communities sure. and share. In their com with their community members. Absolutely, so important, so important. Yes. So Jackie, tell me a little bit about who who is coming to speak this year. I know I went to the one last year and it was just outstanding. There were so mm. many great speakers. Mm. So this year, who do I have to look forward to? Well, mm -hmm. our whole focus this year is going to be on community. Um, the national theme is connect, create, contribute. Okay. And we add a community because we feel Montana is the last best place. Sure. And it's because of our older um, adults. And, and to contribute time and talent and life experience um, that benefit others, communities that encourage the community members um, and contributions of older adults, it just makes them stronger. Absolutely. So, we recognize that older adults play a key role in the vitality of our neighborhoods, our networks, and lives. So we have um, some wonderful speakers that come about. Uh, Don Redfoot, um, who is a professor, but he's a retired with AARP with their, I think it was like a strategic planning and worked with the Policy Institute in sure. D.C. Of course, really is very uh, aware of the issues. And he's going to be talking about the very um, focus on those themes that we just mentioned. Um, we're also looking at a panel on community innovation. Uh, Reno Sharet is uh, MSU Director of the American Indian Outreach uh, from MSU, and she'll be talking about respecting elders in our culture. Okay. Um, Wednesday, we'll focus on health with Kurt Almy talking about um, opiate addiction. He is a U.S. attorney coming in. We'll have a health alternatives panel that'll be talking about alternatives to any sort of drugs and those type of things, what to do for wellness. And then Thursday, <coughs> everything will be tied all together. Rebecca Edelmeyer, um, who is also a doctor and pharmaceutical, will be talking about health alternatives and how to uh, work, especially with the area of Alzheimer's. So important. Yes. It sounds like an amazing yeah, conference. It's going to be a of, full yeah, day. We have a lot of keynotes this year and a few breakouts, yeah. a lot of fun mm -hmm. breakouts. That's really amazing. And then mm -hmm. I have to say my absolute favorite part of the conference is the centenarian lunch. Yes. What day is that? So I make sure it's on my calendar. It is <laughs> Tuesday. Uh, to, uh, September 24th, and okay. it will be a banquet this year. Wonderful. And so we're hoping to sell. And the unique thing this year is that we possibly will have three centenarians that will be turning 110, which makes them <laughs> super centenarians. That's amazing. <laughs> yes. Four different centenarians. Three. Three. three yes. That's amazing. So we're crossing our fingers. <laughs> yeah. So in the information I was looking over this morning, it said that there's going to be kind of four different tracks that people are going to be able to follow through the conference. Yes. Can you can yes. you tell me a little bit about that? And so the four different tracks, we have focused on connecting, creating, okay. com cr uh, contributing, and community, and all falls into community. And so we'll be looking at health um, issues, uh, Medicare, of course, there's a new wellness check that goes with Medicare, sure. Social Security, we'll be talking about um, the state health patrol of the ship. Uh, counseling. We will have people come in and talk about estate planning. So it, it is it's full. We also have a drumming um, uh, feature that drumming your way to health, which I thought Wonderful. was kind of cool. Wonderful. And these are all local um, Montana mm -hmm. folks, except for Dr. Edamal, who is coming in from DC. That's amazing, and it, and people can kind of pick and choose which you parts bet. of the track they can go to, so you they can bet. go to health one time, community one time, right? Exactly. Wonderful. That sounds like such a great event. I'm super excited for the conference this year. I know it was so, so good last year, and I'm really excited. So when we get back, we're going to talk about the mini grants mm -hmm. and then the search for the centenarians, how that's going and how that all takes place. So okay. make sure you stay tuned with us because you're not going to want to miss that. Yeah. 
I was diagnosed with diabetes in 1992 and I went into denial. It made me angry. I was a professional chef and it, I didn't want to change my eating style. It took me a long time to get serious about managing my health. My perspective changed from resentment to one of loving my body, the container for my spirit. Getting help from my diabetes educator supported my goals of improved self-care. I want to feel good and have a great life. My diabetes educator helps me do this. Good care is your right. In Montana, there's over 11,000 beds in nursing homes and assisted living facilities. If you or a family member needs assistance or help in obtaining information about care issues and placement options, call 1-800-332-2272. If you or a family member need information about Montana's long-term care resident rights, or if you need help solving a problem or a complaint about a nursing home or an assisted living facility, call us at 800-332-2272. If you give or receive care, you already know that it can cause stress on caregiver and receiver alike. The good news is, if you have limited resources, help is available. The Montana Lifespan Respite Program may be able to help you pay for care while you take a break. Even better news is how easy it is to apply. You can get an application online or have one sent to you. We'll get back to you within five working days. Respite for caregivers. It's okay to need it. It's okay to want it. It's okay to get it. If the Aging Network in Montana was a restaurant, the sign out front would say over 50 million meals served over the last 30 years. Since adequate nutrition is critical to health and quality of life, nutrition services are an important factor in keeping older Montanans healthy, independent, and living in their community and home. To find out more about senior nutrition programs in your area, call 1-800-551-3191. Welcome back to Aging Horizons. Today we're talking to Jackie and Joan all about the Governor's Council on Aging and the Governor's Conference on Aging. So make sure you stay tuned today. So today, Jackie, I want to go back. I, uh, I forgot to ask you about the last panels on Thursday about elder justice and financial exploitation. Can you tell me a little bit about those panels? Yes. Actually, the elder justice panel will be on Wednesday okay. in the afternoon, um, and that has a lot of exciting people on that panel. And then Thursday, um, the Financial Exploitation Network will be coming in and talking about um, financial exploitation and prevention. And they will be a keynote, so you don't want to miss that one. Yeah, yeah you want to make sure you stay through the whole conference. For that. Exactly. And then we'll have a closing uh, keynote that we are still confirming, so I can't say So it's a now. secret guest. We'll yes. have to make sure we stay tuned. <laughs> so we always want to um, close out on a bang, you know. So, sure. And it'll be, I think it'll be exciting. Absolutely. Joan, let's talk a little bit about the many grants. So okay. I've seen this as part of the presentation, but I don't really know how these people apply, how they're selected. Can you tell me a little bit about the process? Sure. Every uh, year at the Governor's Conference, we award uh, locations, programs, uh, a mini-grant. And the qualifications are that they're uh, in a community of less than 10,000. Okay. And then the awards are like of, uh, or between 200 and 1,000, depending on how much money we have to award. And the money that we... Uh, uh, provide or are sponsored is the money we raise through our silent auction at the Governor's uh, Council's silent auction at the uh, conference and then any other uh, funds that sometimes are donated for that purpose. Okay. And if you're a community of 10,000 or less and you have a program, uh, we get a lot of applications from senior centers in these small areas that you know, need a re new refrigerator, they need the flooring fix, they need to, something to uh, be at code for their facility, uh, then they can apply to us. The applications are online, and I don't know if you have the uh, site that yeah, we can, can put, put, that up. At, yep. put up. And uh, they, the deadline is August 1st, Okay. and the application is online, or they could call Jackie and she could send them an application too and it's really fun we present them a big check at some point during the uh, conference and it's just really amazing the things that people need in the sure. outlying areas they you know their funding is limited their communities are small uh, I think last year or the year before we uh, awarded a proposal for telephones 
Wow. They didn't have telephones in yeah. their senior center, and so they were, you know, using their own phones or whatever. So it, uh, you know, a lot of times we can't uh, fund the whole project, but we can uh, give them some money toward towards it. Towards it. And, and what kind of projects are allowable under the grants? Oh, we've uh, uh, awarded uh, money to, like, for refrigerators, dishwashers. We help pave a parking lot. Um, last year, chairs, tables for the senior center, sure. mm -hmm. telephones. Uh, sometimes we, there's a special project or program that's going on and they need, uh, you know, paper and supplies. Sure. At one point we uh, did uh, award uh, money to a program that wanted to bring more vegetables into their uh, menus and we did that was a one-time thing sure. so you know we're open to any suggestion and uh, members of the council review the applications and then make the decisions that's a wonderful program and if people want to <coughs> donate and aren't able to attend the silent auction they can do that too is that correct mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. wonderful great mm -hmm. that's wonderful mm -hmm. well I'm glad that all the money I spend at those silent auctions goes to such a good cause because yes they're great silent auctions mm -hmm. they're great silent auctions we have uh, great items yeah and fun. Mm -hmm. so so, Jackie, let's talk a little bit about my personal favorite part of the conference, which is the Centenarian <laughs> Conference. So how do you find these people? Well, you know, we really try to do a lot of outreach uh, through a lot of, like, the assisted living and nursing homes, but just in the community, senior centers, et cetera, sure. and, and asking people to send in names of um, folks that are going to be turning 100 for, like, this year at the end of 2019, so okay. we're looking at who will turn 100 this year. Uh, and then they will send me um, the names and sometimes profiles, which ask what their secret to longevity is, uh, favorite quotes, some favorite memories, and those just, it's just amazing to hear some of the stories that the centenarians have the town. Yeah, reading um, those books are so yeah. <laughs> great. I love those. And so we do include those profiles in the conference program, and so we, um, this year, may have a close to 133 to feature. Wow. Um, and so we're hoping out of that 133, I know 24 centenarians we know of live in the Billings area where the conference wow. will be held. Could be a big so we're one. hoping, and one of our 100, um, potentially 110 year old lives in Billings. So That's amazing. So we're kind of excited about that. So, so um, they just send me the names, and what we I do is I contact the governor's office to get a certificate um, acknowledging their 100 years of age in celebration, and we do send them that certificate. But also at the conference, um, we invite them to attend the banquet, and the governor has been invited to attend, and he or the lieutenant governor, which one is uh, available, will uh, do a sort of a presentation, but present the certificates to the centenarian at the thing and That's take wonderful. pictures. It's it's just such a wonderful event, it and we really do read is. their profiles at the banquet. That's wonderful. And if people know someone in their community or in their family that's turning 100 this year, they can contact you? Definitely. And it is also online for them okay. to fill out the form mm -hmm. if they'd like to do that. <coughs> wonderful. Well, yes. I, I just I can't say enough about how great that lunch is and how yeah. wonderful those profiles are. You just learn such neat, neat things mm -hmm. reading those profiles. Mm -hmm. So I'm so glad that's part of the conference. It's well, just really it's great. Well, St. Montana's the best, best state and we are doing something right. That's absolutely, <laughs> absolutely true. So when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about the registration process and how you can help sponsor the conference through your as an individual or as an organization and a little bit about the tabling opportunities that are there. So you're not going to want to miss that. Make sure you stay tuned to Aging Horizons. I think the most pleasant surprise when we turned 65 and signed up for Medicare Part B was finding out about our Welcome to Medicare preventive visit. It was free and it gave us the opportunity to visit with our doctors and establish a plan for our health going forward. They reviewed our medical history, measured our height, weight, blood pressure, and counseled us on other risk factors. To learn more about Medicare's free or low-cost preventive and wellness benefits, call your local SHIP counselor at 800-551-3191. I mentioned it's free, right? Twice. Questions about Medicare and other types of insurance? Contact the State Health Insurance Assistance Program Office to get answers to questions like, what is the difference between Medicare and Medicaid? And how do you decide if you need Medicare supplemental insurance? This insurance counseling program is not a sales program. It is available to provide answers to your insurance questions. 
For more information, call the State Health Insurance Assistance Program Office at 1-800-332-2272. Cook foods to the right temperature using a food thermometer. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. In Montana, we know all about responsibility and personal accountability. Don't pay another medical bill that you don't understand. Take charge. Review your medical bills and call your provider right away if you have questions. If your bills are too confusing, call Montana SMP, the Senior Medicare Patrol. Call 800-551-3191 and get connected directly to a local office. Call Montana SMP today. Welcome back to Aging Horizons. We're speaking with Jackie and Joan all about the Governor's Conference on Aging. So, Joan, can we just run through one more time um, how people get uh, signed up for either the mini grants applications or the centenarian. So how do people contact you guys about either of those things? Uh, well, uh, we have a website okay. on the DPHHS uh, website and there's the applications, there's the um, on on the website and I think you just go in and pull it up and, and apply. And I think if uh, family members have questions about the centenarians, they can call Jackie. Great. And the same with the mini grants. Uh, you know, if they can't find it online or, or they have questions. So we want it as available as possible. Sure, so. and we could send them an application if they don't have Absolutely. access to the internet. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. wonderful, perfect. And then Joan, tell me a little bit about the Governor's Advisory Council. How do people get involved in that if, they are, if they're interested in that? Uh, again, they can go on the governor's uh, uh, website, and there's a, a place that says boards and councils. The councils, and you just click on that and go in. And we're really encouraging people to apply to be on the governor's advisory council. We okay. have three-year terms, and mm -hmm. with the uh, possibility of you know requesting to uh, be reappointed. Um, and I've been on the council for six years, and okay. uh, we like to have people from all over the state. Uh, it really brings a great perspective and I would really encourage anyone out there that's listening. Uh, the, the majority of the board is 60 and over but we do have a few folks who are still working who bring a great perspective to our, sure. to our board and mm -hmm. so I would encourage anyone who's interested in the issues and who's interested in being part of this great conference uh, to uh, contact the governor's office and apply to be a member of the Advisory Council. Wonderful, wonderful. Thanks. Jackie, let's talk about how people get signed up to come to the conference first. So how do you register for the conference? Well, you can register online. Uh, we have actually a Governor's Conference on AG website. Okay. And it, it talks about the speakers and all that's available. Mm -hmm. And we will start to put a lot of the breakout um, suggestions on there. And so they can go in and register. They can pay by credit card. They can send me a check. Uh, we also uh, connect with a lot of our senior centers and outreach in sending out a hard copy registration because we realize that not everybody has access to the internet sure. so to be watching for that in the mail um, and they can call me and say how do I register and I can register them online and get them all set up it's $75 uh, for senior now I know that uh, sounds a little high but we're looking at a banquet and lunches and such and all the breaks that kind of helps <coughs> excuse me deter the cost sure. of a lot of that and we may have some scholarship available this year for seniors that really would like to go but don't have the financial natural means to do so. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And about how many people come each year to the conference? Um, between 250 to 300. Wow, and that's a great that group. That includes our mm -hmm. vendors and sponsors and sure. such too. Speaking of vendors and sponsors, how do you become a vendor or a sponsor at the conference? Because that's a huge audience. Um, I do a lot of outreach, but if they're just interested in, in you know, joining us and sponsoring, that's also through the website, um, or they can again contact me. And there's a, a website that has all of the information, the type of sponsorships and the cost and what comes with the sponsorships. Vendors, we have plenty of vendor space available. It's around $350 
per table, but they get a free registration with that, which includes being able to sit in on a lot of the uh, different um, you know, activities and such. So I think it's quite a bargain, uh, yeah. plus the traffic <laughs> through there. Um, I do want to remind folks that it is the 24th <coughs> through the 26th of September in okay. Billings at the Billings Conven Hotel and Convention Center. Wonderful. And they're offering um, a group rate. So it's a good time to get in there and yeah. check out the If you're coming rates. from out of town, getting exactly. in and getting in that hotel right is exactly. super important. Yeah. And what type of vendors do you have at the conference? Is it, you know, is it just assisted livings? Who might be a potential vendor or exhibitor that it, maybe they hasn't thought about it? It is really uh, the whole combination of things. Um, I know that Social Security will have a sure. booth there this oh, yeah. year. You know, uh, aging will have a lot of information there. A lot of different area agencies will bring their information to come. We've had people come in and do um, Oils, essential oils has been one of our vendors. Uh, maybe military comes in and does, uh, does something there. So it, it's a whole variety of such. If there sure. are certain things, MTAP and um, Montec sometimes join us to look at the wares that they have um, to help seniors with mobility issues and such. Wonderful. So it's a whole combination of information. Anybody that has any services they can offer to seniors. Sure, which is a large part of the of the population now. Exactly. We, we are all starting to serve seniors in everything yeah. we it's do. It's a great venue. That's really wonderful. Mm -hmm. And um, those mini grant scholarships, the deadline for that was, remind me one more time? I believe that was August, August 1st. August 1st. August yes. 1st. And so we want to make sure communities get that. We want to be able to, I, I, yeah, it's August 1st. I have another deadline in mind, <laughs> but that's different. <laughs> and um, so we encourage, uh, especially rural communities, to apply because I think it's a worthwhile benefit. Absolutely. And you're going to update that website with the speakers as that final yeah, day keynote comes, gets announced, yes. right? And we are already have some of the speakers on the website, and okay. we just update it as often as I can get into to update it. Sure, and there's probably bios and stuff up there too. Yes, so it will. A little bit they will about. start to go in as we get information in. Wonderful. And how about the centenarian? Are there any sort of deadlines for people to get that information to you? Usually we like to have all that information by, I would say, um, October 20th so that we can get um, the information and profiles written up because we have to be able to get the program done in a timely manner. Sure. Uh, but they can, say, if they're not looking at going to the conference and such, I take information anytime, okay. and then we just include them in next year. But I'm usually squeaking them in at the last minute. Right. So we want to make sure you mm -hmm. get that information mm -hmm. by the end of August. Yes. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me. This was wonderful. I I can't say enough about how wonderful that conference is. It's really one of the highlights of my year every awesome. year, and I really could not encourage people enough to go because mm -hmm. it's a wonderful conference. It's a so great gathering. It mm -hmm. really is, and so many great speakers and knowledgeable people all in one space, which mm -hmm. is really wonderful. It's great. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I really make sh hope that you take the opportunity to go to that Governor's Advisory Council, um, the Governor's Conference on Aging, because you'll really learn so much. There are so many great speakers all in one place. And then just being part of that aging community in Montana that we all can learn so much from. And the Centenarian Luncheon is something you'll never forget. It's really, <laughs> it's worth the drive to Billings in and of itself. So thank you for tuning in. And thank you, Jackie and Joan, for joining us. Thank you. Special thanks to the Department of Public Health and Human Services for their continued support. Hosts on Aging Horizons are program specialists at the Montana Office on Aging. Production facilities provided by Video Express Productions. For more information about Aging Horizons, call the Department of Public Health and Human Services toll-free at 800-332-2272.